Hi, and welcome to Work Smart with Bauer Screencast. My name is Vinay Raghu, and in this screencast, I aim to show you certain not so common use cases of Bauer and how you can use it within your regular development workflow. Let's get started with a real life use case. I have on my screen an example project that I worked on. We were building a dashboard application and we had to tie in to enormous amounts of third party plugins. We had one for animation, we had one for charts, we had one for drag and drop ability, and we used foundation for the front end for cross browser support. As the complexity of any project grows, the amount of third party plugins and how you maintain them just becomes insane. That's where Bower comes into play and helps you keep track of each and every plugin and each and every version that makes sense for your project. What is Bower? Bower is a front end package manager that allows you to keep track of, install, maintain, update all of these different third party plugins. Let's look at the different uses, use cases, and advantages of Bower. The first use case of Bower is installing dependencies. Let's say I wanted to start a project with Bootstrap. I would go to the Bootstrap website and download the corresponding file. But if you notice, Bootstrap only comes with the Bootstrap's JavaScript file. However, it has an implicit dependency of jQuery. If I use Bower in a sample project and I say Bower install bootstrap, Bower will implicitly look into the dependencies and also fetch jQuery for me. If you notice now, it is not just installed bootstrap, but also bootstrap's dependency jQuery. Now, foundation has five different dependencies. Let's look at what happens when I install foundation. As you can see, Foundation has multiple dependencies like FastClick, jQuery, jQuery Placeholder, Cookie, Modernizer. Now you can imagine what happens when I have 20 different plugins, each of which could possibly have two other dependencies. Instead of it being my responsibility to find out all of that, go to their corresponding websites, download the latest version, figure out whether it matches with my project or not, I'm basically offloading all of that to Bower. Bower helps you stay sane by keeping track of which version of each plugin you're using. It could be possible that you use two different plugins and only specific versions of those work for you. I have the bower.json file on my screen open. As you can see, it lists all the dependencies of my application as well as specific versions. Bower allows me to not only mention specific version, but also limit it by using characters like greater than, greater than or equal to, lesser than, lesser than or equal to, and tilde. Now this symbol over here means anything that starts with 3.0 point is okay. Now if you're familiar with semantic versioning, what that means is if the library updates to 3.0.2 or at this place over here, it means they're making minor releases, which are mostly bug fixes if they release a version like 3.1.0 or 3.2.0, that's a major release. By definition, major release tends to break and introduce breaking changes, which we do not want. What if I want exactly this version? By just mentioning that version number over there, I'm saying that my application works with just the specific version. So now it becomes Bower's responsibility to go into any of those plugins look up that specific version and pull that version. Don't you see how amazing that is? Especially if you have 50 to 100 different plugins, it just relieves you of all that headache. Updating. Now that I have each of these different libraries, and it's been three months since I started this project, what if I wanted to check if there are any minor releases that I could update to? What if I identified certain bugs that have been fixed from the point when I started this project. Now I want to update each of these libraries. If it weren't for Bower, it becomes my responsibility to go to the homepage of each of these projects, check if they have any updates, 
make sure they don't break anything in mine. See that it is compatible with my application. With Bower, it becomes easier to do updating. All I need to do is go into my terminal and type Bower update. And it becomes Bower's responsibility to identify and download any updates that do not break my application. One of my favorite use cases with Bower is that there is no third party code in our repository. Now, if you've worked with any GitHub repository, you can easily identify with this problem. Instead of committing a third party library into my application, I'm just sharing an endpoint, giving the name of the library and the version. So then if anyone that's using or making a fork of this project gets to download their own copy, it reduces a lot of code bloat. It keeps the repository clean and it makes sure that all code in your repository belongs to you and any third party plugin remains separate from the code that you write. The other major advantage of Bower is conflict resolution. On my screen, I have the terminal open for a project that has a Bower.json file. Now let me install the dependencies. Now, as you can see, as soon as the installation happens, Bower notifies me that different plugins depend on different version of jQuery. It says here you have something between 1.8 and 2.1, but here it says it has to begin with 2.0. What do you want me to do? While it does not do the conflict resolution by itself, in such cases, it becomes immensely useful to know upfront before you're deploying any code to production that there are dependencies that you need to take care of. Now I can do two things. I can just give a specific version and say, of the 13 choices that you have listed here, I want option one. This is the version I'm going with. Once you make a choice, based on your choices, Bobber goes ahead and makes the installation for you. As you can see, the installation is completed and now I have all my dependencies available and I have the specific versions that I requested. Let's look at a little advanced use case. Let's say I push the same repository to production where it runs on a Node.js server and it tries to run the Bower install command. It is going to give the same error, which I do not want because I've already identified the resolutions and I want to make sure that these conflict resolutions that I chose become persistent. I have typed Bower install again, and it's again giving me the same error saying there is a conflict, which version do you want to use? And if you notice over here, it says prefix your choice with an exclamation mark to persist. Now let's say instead of just typing one, I'm gonna type bang one. Now I have made my choices persist in the bower.json file so that when another person makes a fork and runs Bower install, or I push to production and I'm installing these plugins, it does not throw the error again. Let's look at the updated bower.json file now. As you can see, now Bower has made a note of the conflict resolution choices that I have made. So the next time I run bower.install in the same project, it runs without giving me the conflicts. Now I have removed all the plugins that Bower had installed just to redo the same process but this time I've already marked the conflict resolution choices. When I run install now, it's not going to give me an error. Instead, it's going to implicitly make the resolutions that I provided. As you can see over here, it gives me a notification saying, hey, there was a conflict, but you already made a choice in your bower.json and it resolved to this. The last point with this screencast that I wanted to touch upon is how do you configure Bower? I do not want my third party code to reside in a folder called Bower underscore components. I would rather have them reside under a vendors folder. Now on my screen, I have a different project which basically just has a Bower.json file and a configuration that instructs Bower to install the dependencies in a folder whose name I choose. As you can see, in this project, all the files have been installed under vendors 
rather than the default bower.com components. How do you get this done? In the root directory of your project, just create a file with the title .bowerrc. This is again following the same JSON format and this is the configuration option and this is your choice. By doing so, you're instructing Bower to install all the dependencies in a folder titled vendors. And as you can see, Bower complies. With this, I conclude the screencast of working smart with Bower. I hope you enjoyed this screencast and got out of it why you need to use Bower and how it really helps you on medium to large scale projects. I hope you start using Bower in your projects immediately. Thank you and good luck.